guys, Patty from Patty's Crafty Spot, and I'm here to share with you some of the new dies for the new release that just came out, and I am so excited for these ones, so wait until you see them. So let me go ahead first, walk you through what I used. So the, what, some of the new dies from mini albums, this is 98, and this adds a lot of new decorative elements, such as what I did right here on your albums as well as there is another, there's a couple of new binding systems out. However, I use binding system D, and this gives you a wider um, section here for your albums. So the little um, gusset areas that you can make your, you can we can make chunkier albums now with this die here. And then I use from Creeley's Nest XXL dies, I use number 72 for my pattern paper, and I used number 24 for my base pages, as well as from Journals and Planners, I use the medium pocket die. So let me just walk you through real quick what I made, and there's a full tutorial following that for this part. So there's going to be three parts, and this is part one, and this is walking you through the new binding system, and also the little decorative dies here. So we went ahead and did that, as you can see. Super fun. And now you can see also too how wide our binding system is. So this is only four of the bind new binding systems cut out, four pages that we went ahead and glued together. And then the back side went ahead and did the same thing here. And we'll figure out what we're going to do with this as we go along. So right here. And then I opened it up. And again, on the inside here, this is the medium pocket die that I went ahead and did a very simple pocket here. That way, later on, on the other um, second part that I'm going to show you, we're going to get a little fancier with our pockets, but I just wanted you to see the difference. So we started off with some just normal pockets that we made. Um, really fun. All right, and then you can see the binding system here. Anyway, I can't wait to share all the new dies with you because these are fun with the new mini album binding system dies and the on the edge dies and the new decorative elements for those. I am really enjoying this new release, so I'm super excited about this one and I hope you guys will be too. All right, so enjoy the tutorial. All right, so I'm going to show you one of the new binding systems from Creolese. So this is binding system D. And the difference between D and A is a few things. So you get the decorative borders for your pattern paper, and these are the ones with the dots. The binding system A, it just has smooth lines, so you just get a smooth finish on your pattern paper. So this one comes with dots, which you can use them. They're interchangeable on those parts. And the difference with the binding system itself is the width. So the new one is much wider in the middle and the original one is a little smaller so this way you can actually have chunkier albums and let me show you the difference so this is D so this is a new one you can see how thick that is and this is A and you can see the difference between the two it's almost double the size so you can add a lot more items to your mini albums and really get them nice and chunky so what I did was I already went ahead and I cut out four pieces just like this and I've attached three of them, and we'll go ahead and attach this one together. Now, normally I do use tape on these, but this time I'm going to use glue, and part of that is because I'm running out of tape, but I also want to just play with glue for change, because I usually am always taping it, so right now we're just going to add glue, and then to put them together folded and I'm just going to go ahead and stick it on top lining everything up so we're nice and flush and the one thing the difference I did notice doing the others with the glue than the tape is I have a, obviously a few minutes to go ahead and get that even so you can see now that is everything is completely flushed and even together and that is one two three four together and now this is going to give us a spine that is one and three quarter inches. All right. So anyway, I'm going to cut out some more pieces and I'll be back. All right. So let me show you what I did. So I put my binding system together, as you saw, and I added um, tape 
to the outside inside of the outside cover. So this is the binding system. And I just added tape here in here because we're not going to add any. Sometimes I put the paper on the front, but we're going to do a decorative element here with some of the new dies. So I'm leaving that one blank. So I went ahead and added um, tape to the insides. And then what I also did because of when you add the pages, it's kind of hard to see. You may or may not be able to see. But what I do is go and mark a half an inch down. So if you got this outside edge here, I'm going in a half an inch. And I make a little tick mark. How well you can see it. You can kind of see the dot there. And then I do one there. And what that is to do is when I'm adding my pages, I will add line them up to the little marks. That way I get the correct spacing from top to bottom. But anyway, right now we're just going to be focusing on the front and the back covers for this. So what I did was I went ahead and cut out two pieces of cardstock. And on those I used the Cree Nestle's XXL dies. And this one has the stitch. And this is number 24 rectangles. And for my pattern paper, I use the Creolis Nest XXL dies number 72. And these are rectangles with these little pretty scallop edges. And it kind of, you see how pretty that is? So what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and attach these to the tops. Because I want to attach this before I attach it to my binding system. Because as you can tell, when I go ahead and put it down like this, it's going to cover over where the pattern paper is. And I want to go ahead and cover that over because I'm putting another element on the top of this. So let's go ahead and get started. And I haven't decided yet. This was going to be my front cover. However, I'm really liking the look of the other one. So I might switch out what I wanted to do for covers. And I turn my phone off. Never fails. And then get this one on. And then the, this one here has the pretty little stitch lines. So they're kind of pretty. That side's pretty too. This whole paper collection is pretty, and this is by Blue Fern Studios. And I don't know, it doesn't have a cover sheet because it was individual sheets, but it's Jane's Memoirs. And the, the paper collection itself is super pretty. All right, so I wanted to do this for the cover, so I thought that was pretty, but I feel like that could pass almost as a back, where I feel this one only could pass as a front cover. So I think, I think this is going to be my front cover. Let me see real quick. Whoops. Yeah, I think this is going to be my front cover. So what you want to go ahead now and what we're going to do is let me get this out of the way a little more so you can see it. So I have my little tick marks right here and down oops, and down here. And this is literally going to just sit right on top. And I'm lining it up with the pencil marks that I made for my half inch distance. But with this one here, because this is a little thicker. I'm actually just going to also add a little bead of glue down my tape here. This is, I feel like, it's going to need it. So, line that there. And. Just make sure that when you're putting them on that you're paying attention to um, 
if your pattern paper is going the right direction. And because I'm not adding a page to the front, I can erase my little marks on my binding system. Just like that. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and add the back one. And again, same thing. I'm going to add a little strip of glue. Not much, just a little added security on it. Just like that. So here we go. It's going to be so cute. And then you can see how much space that we have on our binding system that we can really go ahead and add some chunkier pages to that. All right, so then the next thing is with the new binding system that we're using. So we're using D, this one here, and it comes with the piece for the pattern paper and it's got these pretty little holes in it. And then another new piece for mini albums, this is more of a decorative element, and this is number 98, and it comes with three different dies. There's one right here. This will cut out a full strip um, all the way around with these little holes in it. And then you have one to do a single. So if you have the smaller piece here, this one here, if you cut this one out, you can use the single one, and you can put it in the center and make some neat, fun designs. But right now, we are going to work off of the longer one, or the wider one, I should say. And we're also going to use this one here. And this one only will just cut these little holes here. So let me show you what we're going to do. So basically, what we're going to create is this, which is, that was pretty. So I laced up some ribbon through it. And that is going to go right on the front of our book. Isn't that pretty? So I'm going to show you how to make that. Um, I have a little bow that I'm going to put in the top, but I'm not going to snip this, so I'm going to have this for a while. But I'm not going to snip it until I know what I want to do with the bow part, because I liked the bow. But then I was also thinking I could, if I did want to do the bow, I could dangle some charms down, which I also thought might look pretty. So. I'll decide later on on that, but let me show you how to make that. So, here is my pattern paper. And I'm going to go ahead and set this one on. And because I'm covering most of it, I don't need to worry about too much of the pattern. I just want some of the color. So that's why I'm going to use this sheet because most of it's going to, as you can see, is going to kind of get covered over by the ribbon. You'll still see some of it, but I do want the ribbon more of the focal point. So I'm going to go ahead and put that there, and then this piece, which happens to fit right inside here. So I'm going to go ahead and line up the two, and I'm just going to kind of even out the top to the bottom. And then when I have it where I want it, I'm going to just use some washi tape to hold it down. And now I'm going to run it through my machine. So I'm going to stop, and I'm going to run it through. All right, so when you pop it out, this is what you come out with. And I went ahead and I did ink my edges, and but you have these little holes here. So that's just combining these two pieces. All right, so let me just show you real quick, because there's other new binding systems um, in this new release. So there's this one here, too. This is binding system B. And this one here, you have an even smaller. So this one this one here is almost twice the size of the original and this one is about half the size of the original so if you only need a small thin little fold or binding part here you can just use this so this would be great if you wanted to make just a some simple little photo thing um like a photo pocket or something this would be good you can even use this if for cards because it's not that thick so we'll play around with this one too at some point, but that one's fun. And then like these little, this, the rectangle ones, there's also ones that are circles. So they have the same thing. 
And this one is number 99. And it has the single circles and then the ones with the little box. These would almost remind you of like little Legos when they punch out. And then the one with the little circles. So I'm using the rectangle one, but you can put some nice thin little string right through those and that would be really pretty. And then we also have binding system B, uh, C, and this has little stitch lines. So super pretty. And this one is, I don't think it's quite the same as the other one. Let's see. Because to me it looks a little smaller, maybe. Uh, looks like it might be just a tad smaller, but not by much. So it's pretty close to the original. But then you have the pretty little stitch lines. All right, so those are some of the new stuff coming out. And they're going to be really fun for the mini albums. So let's go ahead and get this threaded up. Oh, I didn't erase. Did I erase the back? Nope. I knew I had to do that one. Alright. So, let's get this one threaded up so I have some more ribbon. So, to do this one, I'll show you how I thread them up. So, I'm just going to start with the bottom. And I have this small ribbon here. I mean, it is, I don't know if I can get you a size on it, quarter inch. So quarter inch ribbon will fit nicely through these little holes. It's a start. So now I'm going to bring it all the way even. And then now I'm just going to go ahead and bring it up through the next hole up here. So kind of just like tying shoes. And try to make sure you can get your ribbon is flat because that's what's going to go attached to your book and you don't really want much bulk. So as you do it, try to make sure you can keep your ribbon flat. pretty out. Oh, I twisted down here. My ribbon is not the same on both sides, so the front side is shinier than the back side. So just make sure you pay attention to that as you go along. Again, keeping it as flat as possible on the back. This one's definitely going to be needing some glue on it. So I want glue as well as the tape. Yes, I went right. With this paper and this ribbon, it, I feel like it's kind of going to give it a Victorian feel. So this collection, um, collection, this new release from Creeley's seems to be like really geared towards mini albums with the new on the edge dies, which are my absolute favorite to work with. So I was really happy when I saw we were getting more on the edge dies. So I just love those ones. Because those ones you can do things with the pages, with pockets. You can use them on anything. So those are really fun. All right. 
Okay, almost done. So on the last one here, you're not going to crisscross over. You're just going to come right up through the top. Go ahead and bring these up. I would pause and do this, but I kind of feel like you need to see the lacing of it, just in case you're, you're unsure or haven't done it before. I just kind of feel like it's important to see that. So then you have this just like that, just like this. All right, so then at the top, again, I'm just going to put a little knot in it. Just like that. And then those will be my, go right here and here. So now I just got to figure out how I want to attach these. I feel would be the best. Hmm. I feel like glue would work, but I also need something to hold it down. So I think a little bit of tape on those spots right there. And that's just to temporarily hold it there while the glue dries. And then we'll add a little piece in here. Yeah, I think I want it like that. And then my got a little twisted there. All right, so I think yeah, that would be pretty. All right. We're going to go for it. So let me get my tape off. And the dry, the glue does dry pretty quickly. So just keep in mind, whatever glue you're using, you may even have to set something heavy on it overnight, depending on the type of glue. But I'm using art glitter glue, so it's pretty quick. So I'm going to definitely put glue on those because I don't want those to come off. on there. Make sure you're even before you commit. Get my tape stuck. Oh, it's going to be so pretty. So that will be the cover. Yeah, using them both, I think it's going to work good. You 
because the tape is holding it there, and then the uh, glue will keep it there. So let's go ahead and repeat that on this one. And when I saw these dies, the, the center ones here with the dots and the, the little um, rectangles, I had this in mind when I saw it. I was like, oh, this could be so pretty. So as soon as I saw it, I knew what I wanted to do. All right, here's that. Looks good. And because you're pressing this down, you definitely want to do it before you add your pages because you don't want to squish your pages. Plus, you can't give it the pressure when you have all the pages in there like you can when it's empty. So, let's go ahead. Move the tape again. The other thing I was thinking of doing is um, taking it, if you did like a single one, and then you could put it on the back spine and you could just do it like, if you had it like this, you can do it where it overlaps so you can crisscross the ribbon to the cover and the edge here. And I think that would be pretty too. There's so many ways you can do this. So I'm so excited for these new dies. A extra glue. So we don't want it coming up. And then same thing again. There we go. Nice. And then that would be the, so that would be your book. I suppose you could even, if you wanted to, like brought them around to the back side. We're just playing, so. That would be pretty too. I'm, of course, I'm going to go ahead and add probably a stronger um, piece of pattern paper here to kind of make it a little more sturdy right this part, but that would be neat. We'll see what we're going to do because I'm not cutting these off until the end. Anyway, so pretty. So what we're going to do right now is we're just going to go ahead and decorate these right here and then we're going to wrap it up for this video and we will come back. This video is going to be in three parts. So we'll be doing some more of the using the new stuff. But I think right now we're just going to go ahead and add some simple pockets to here. Um, I might go ahead and add some elements to this, but we'll see. Let me cut out my paper and then we'll go from there. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and decorate our inside front and back cover. So for that, I went ahead and cut out two more pieces of pattern paper using the um, uh, the Creole's Nest XXL number 72. So I went ahead and cut two more of those. I also cut out of, from for journals and planners the medium pocket die. So out of cardstock, I cut out this piece, and then the pattern paper, I used this one. So we're going to go ahead and add some pockets. So making sure 
We are right. So first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and glue down my pieces here. So I think I want to do it like that. Now for the inside front and back covers, I kind of always like to have them be very similar so that way the start of the album and the end of the album kind of, they work together. And that includes like with the pattern paper even. So I kind of like to have them working together so you start off one way and you're going to end kind of the same way. And I just think it has kind of more of a uniform look to it. So I kind of like that. So I'm going to stick this one down. And then do this one. The back of this paper too is so pretty. There's no bad side on this, which unfortunately makes it really hard to cut the paper because both front and back are equally as gorgeous. That's why I bought two sets. All right, so we have that one. Now we're going to go ahead and stick the pockets down and I'm going to use some tape on my pockets. I get that stuck down. And stick this one down first. Oops. So I'm going to go ahead, and this happens to line up just perfectly. As you can see, all the way around that. So I'm going to center it. And then I'm just going to untuck one side. As you know, I like to do it this way when I stick my stuff down. That way I get them even. And then, let's see. This one. That one looks better. I'm going to go ahead and stick this piece down. Isn't that gorgeous? And then with all the little scallop edges on the pattern paper, super pretty. And let's do the last pocket. So on the front, and inside, and back covers, I just did a simple pocket because I just want you to see how the simple pockets look. And then in the next video with some of the new on the edge dies, we'll go ahead and make some more fancier pockets for the other pages. And we'll do that in um, part two for this. But I just wanted you to see simple pockets first and then what a difference the on the edge dies make when you're adding them to your pockets. And there's that one. And then we'll be all done with this video for part one. And there you go. So there's a, so this is our book. Again, the back will have a harder piece on the back to keep it, um, the spine solid. However, I do like to decorate them first without that. It just seems to be easier for me. So I kind of like it first and then we'll add it. Or maybe we won't add it. Who knows? We'll figure that out when we get that far. But anyway, that's what we have so far. So I really, this is so pretty. I love that. Alrighty. So if you guys like what you see, go ahead, give it a thumbs up. If you're watching this on my YouTube channel, Patty's Crafty Spot, or the Creolies YouTube channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, guys, happy crafting. We'll see you in part two.